Welcome back to Gale Force Winds Season 3. The Gale Force Winds Podcast is proudly sponsored by the Newfoundland and Labrador Construction Association. The NLCA provides unparalleled opportunities for its members through industry education, construction information, government advocacy, and networking events. The NLCA is building Newfoundland and Labrador. For more information, visit nlca.ca. And welcome to another edition of Gale Force Winds. And I want to tell you there is a lot of exciting things happening in Newfoundland and Labrador. I'm Alan Dale. With me as always, my good buddy from the East End of St. John's. How are you, Jerry? Doing well. I've got to I'll be remiss if I didn't say that the location is part of our uh, set. 100%. Right now, we're staring out at the Narrows. And uh, we're here with Jeff Cunningham, and I can't wait to get to know the man. Neither can I, Jerry. It's going to be exciting to find out what's going on in Argentia. Jeff, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself. Well, Jeff Cunningham, Vice President of Operations with A. Harvey, and uh, I've been with the company 35 years, uh, worked in numerous divisions within the company, and now I'm, I guess, enjoying the fact that a little bit of involvement in what's going on in our in Argentia. I think that's pretty good. Yeah. So, Jeff, 35 years with this company. Tell me uh, how you came up through the ranks. Uh, interesting, actually. Well, did I, you start off as a vice president? I st no, did you start off? <laughs> 35 years ago. No, no. <laughs> when he was 36. <laughs> so I was 30, yeah. No, I started at Harvey's Oil, actually, in sales. Okay. And how did I get there? I applied for the controller's job. And they said, yeah, you wouldn't be a great controller, but you'd be a better salesperson. So uh, actually, back then, Petro Canada was looking for a commercial sales rep in Newfoundland. And uh, oddly enough, they couldn't get anyone from Montreal to move to Newfoundland. So that was my big win. So I got the job um, and uh, basically toured the island selling fuel, lubricants for Petro Canada, and uh, did that for about 12 years. And then when the offshore started, uh, of course, A. Harvey, uh, Harvey's all being part of the A. Harvey group, um, they wanted someone to head up the offshore division here at the waterfront. And I guess Hibernia at the time was a big fuel consumer of Petro Canada's. Right. So I guess my connections with those folks, they said, you'd be the right one to operate the base. So I moved from the sales piece to into operations, which is really lucky for me. Uh, and uh, then a few years ago, our VP of operations retired, and I had uh, the good fortune to take on his role. So that's what sort of gets me more exposed to the broader part of the company, right. not just the offshore side yeah. of things. Tell us about the company. Well, what's the company all about? Oh, my God. Hey, Harvey. Yeah. Uh, it's been around eight, a few years, a I few understand. Years, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, 1865 it started. Wow. And, uh, yeah, still the same family. Uh, Mrs. Patton, uh, she was a Harvey. I've met her. her. You've met her. Wonderful yeah. lady. Yeah, wonderful lady and still going strong. Her uh, grandfather started the company. Uh, and uh, here we are today, many generations later. Uh, she's still involved, chair of the board, and her son, Robert, is my, my boss, and he's the president of the company. Is this one of the oldest operating companies in Newfoundland right now, would it's you say? Pretty it's pretty close. close. Yeah. yeah, so 1865-ish would be uh, a number of merchant-type companies yeah. uh, you know, in our history would have been around that time. So there would be many viewers that wouldn't know, uh, many in Newfoundland would probably know, but globally they wouldn't know what you guys are involved in. So tell us all the lines of operation. What is it you're involved in here? Yeah, well, like I told you, the offshore side of things, that's certainly, uh, we've been involved with the offshore since the uh, first wells were drilled back in the 60s wow. uh, off Labrador, uh, whether it be crewing uh, or the, the logistic support that you see here at the waterfront. Uh, we're also at uh, uh, the bulk road salt, so we bring in cargoes of salt throughout the province and of course the big famous salt pile here in right. St. John's. Yeah. And uh, we keep the city going and, and a lot of the provincial government uh, depots, the highway depots with salt. Um, and we're also Harvey Auto Carriers, so 90% of the new cars that come into the province end up coming into the port and our trucks, you can't go on the highway without, without seeing one of them, I'm sure. Wow. 
uh, we take them to the dealers throughout the province. Uh, and uh, we're in Argentia with her Argentia freezers and terminals, and uh, we do a bunch of things out there. Glad to talk about that yeah. between the fishery and and transportation, even a bit of oil and gas stuff out in Argentia. And uh, oh my heavens! Well, Browning Harvey is a subsidiary company of the group, with the Pepsi bottler and also Harvey's Oil. Wow! Yeah, and also we have uh, a, um, a a Harvey Logistics, which is a uh, freight forwarding customs ships agency firm that operates here in the building. And I hope I didn't forget any. Gee. Well, you might have, but oh, that's okay. We might find along. Yeah. Um, <laughs> how many people will be on the broader team, roughly? Uh, you know, I guess it's somewhat seasonal, seasonable, but, you know, it could be anywhere from four to 500 employees yeah. throughout, the, throughout the network. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that something, yeah. eh? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty, uh, pretty solid, mature company. Yeah. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. hundred yeah. percent. Ours is two years old, yeah, so we're, we're years a bit old. of a startup. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, well, yeah. tell me about Argentia. You, uh, tell me about what's going on out there for the viewers. Well, I guess from, from our point of view, we've been there for since the 80s. Uh, and we've been supporting uh, companies like MSKIP. They have a weekly container service uh, uh, that comes into there from, uh, from Europe. So we, we offload their ships every week, uh, containers, whatever. Um, we have a coal storage, which is why we started in Argentia originally, uh, the need for fish coal storage. So we got four large freezers out there. Is that right? Okay. And yeah, so uh, that's been what our mainstay has been. And of course, I don't have to tell you guys about the ups and downs mm. of the fishery. It's, no. uh, so, you know, we've ridden a lot of waves there. Uh, so, but, but thankfully right now, uh, you know, with the uh, help of, you know, some regular customers out there, our, our fishery side of the business is pretty good. Is that right? Yeah. Good. So we have, you know, a couple of ships a month going in and out of there with catch and into our freezers. And, uh, you know, we do a bunch of things with that, sort it and help them repackage or whatever they need to do. And, uh, and basically we also support whatever other projects and, and materials come and go from Argentia. So give an example, all the, uh, as you know, the uh, Husky is billing, or Sonovus now is building that big GBS out there. Mm -hmm. Well, we, uh, all the, the rebar that came in that goes in that big concrete slab, well, that came into the port of Argentia, we offloaded it, put it in our yard and shipped it out every right. day. So little bits and pieces. Uh, that make all that work out there is yeah. no no one thing in Argentia for us anyway. Right, you know, is the magic formula. You know, it's a little bit of of, of everything really. You're a big part of the ecosystem that's going on out there, though. You got your fingers in a lot of things. Oh yeah. yeah. Where are they where are they taking Argentia in the future? There's a lot of talk about it right now. We we had the premier on uh, just before Christmas. Released him on New Year's Day, and he was very excited about what was going on. Well, for us, Argentia has always been. You know, where we are, you know, major footprint there, we have full-time staff and facilities. You know, our dream, I guess, someday, the offshore, we thought, might be, you know, it might grow beyond our capabilities here in the port. Mm -hmm. So we always felt, you know, with our footprint out there, that Argentia would be the next expansion place for us in the oil and gas. So it's always been on our back of our mind. Right. Um, Argentia is blessed with the real estate that the Americans left behind. I mean, it, Incredible, isn't it? it's, yeah, it's a wonderful harbor, but even more so, it's got all that lay down area right. that, uh, that's there. And of course, if you look out in the harbor here, we don't have that. No. Right? right? We yeah. got a lovely port, very well protected, but we just don't have the space. And that's, space. that's the technical term, lay down area. Lay down area, yeah. yeah. So uh, when you're looking at some of these big projects, like, you know, they're looking at the wind and, and uh, you know, mining or aquaculture, there's space out there to yeah. do to work with, you know, and it's uh, it's all handy to the port, and you need that. I mean, if you're going to lay something down to eventually put it on a ship or take it off a ship, you know, it's really nice to have it next to the dock. Right. <laughs> and Otherwise, the transportation costs yeah. are either ex you know excruciatingly expensive or impossible <laughs> to try to move stuff through a city. You know, yeah. so any big material. You know, you, you need so that was all lay down built, next built, to the dock. So that was all built in the well, 40s, it's all the old, I guess, right? Yeah, it was all part of the old runway system. Yeah, okay. and it's and it's held up over time. Reasonably so. Yeah. I know I've driven around there. It's as yeah. good as any gravel 
uh, lay down area or, or uh, yard in the city that I've seen. So we're going there tomorrow. Good. By the we're way, going there yeah. tomorrow. So we'll put yeah. some of that footage yeah. in there. Yeah. Yeah. So, so for our, uh, so for the the guests, the audience that wouldn't understand the importance of Argentia to the Americans, it was a very strategic port. Yeah, it was it was a strategic port, but it was also an airport. Right. Yep. So you know, and they. Uh, you know, there's even if you go up to the moor, you'll see leftover ramps where the seaplanes would land in the harbor, and basically taxi up out of the water, onto the onto the taxiways, runways, yeah. wow. amphibious planes. You know, and of course you had the whole uh, navy docking area yeah. there, and the whole all the infrastructure for the base. And, the, and like I say, the runway system where planes came and went. I don't know where they ever found a day where it wasn't right. hellishly windy out there on the <laughs> land. But anyway, they did it back in the 40s. Yeah. Must have been good yeah. pilots. It must have been EPA pilots. It must have been, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would say. <laughs> um, and of course, you know, the Americans were there, I mean, not so long ago. They were in the 90s, right? Yeah. They were still out there in the 90s. And so when they left the base, they left all that infrastructure. All the infrastructure was handed over to the federal government, and yep. then ultimately it ended up in the hands of the Argentia folks. And uh, they've done a you know an excellent job of trying to you know make something permanent out of it, take that asset and turn yeah. it into commercial benefit for for the area. You know? Isn't that amazing yeah. when yeah. there's a vision like that? To t I mean. Uh, to most people, that would represent uh, an economic disaster. The Americans pull out. Same thing happened at CFB Summerside and PEI yeah. pulled out. Everybody thought the the world was coming to an end, and then yeah. people got involved and they started to create different things. And now they have an incredible aerospace sector that has blown up in Summerside because the base was left behind. They use all that infrastructure, not unlike what's happening in Argentia. It must be amazing to see all that on full, and especially for a company that's been around it so mm -hmm. long. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah. But, it was, you know, it's taken a long time. Yeah. I mean, this is a you lot. You said you were there in the 60s you went there? No, we would have been there in the uh, late 70s, early 80s okay. yeah. in our oh. operation. Yeah. Wow. And again, it was that's primarily. Very forward thinking. It was primarily for the fishery back right. then. Yeah. Yeah, that's how we started. And then you just sort of find little pockets of, of opportunity. Uh, but, I mean, that whole area, you know, just the fact that, like, Valet is just down the road at Long Harbor. Yeah. You know, uh, the refinery is, I'll say, just down the road in Cumbachan. So a lot of workers in the area have, you know, gone to work at these locations and gotten skills. And, you know, you're starting to get a little bit of a cluster in the area of support services. You know, right. there are a lot of good companies that are from the area with the expertise. So that, and that's what you need, too, is not just to have the the facility out there but you need to have the people and the expertise to support it yeah you know otherwise everything you got you're looking for has got to come from town yeah and that's yeah. that's a struggle yeah know? so the more you can build up the local area and the more expertise and stuff available in yeah. the area all the better too. With the mining stuff going on in Central, would that be coming through our ginger? Is that too far away? <sighs> that would probably go to Stephenville maybe would it? You think? It all yeah it, but there's it all touches it can all be touched by Argentia, like it's close enough. A lot of the stuff has to come into a port, right? Like if you're building a big mining, uh, I don't know, concentrator or something. Well, it's got to get to get Newfoundland. It's yeah. got to be built in Korea somewhere. Well, Argentia can handle it again because it's a big area. You know, lots of lay down, nice docks. Uh, you know, so that could happen. Chemicals could come in. I'll give you an example. One of the things we do in Argentia, uh, there's soda ash required to by valet to produce the nickel. So they throw it in some kind of water treatment or something. Mm. They use lots of it. Yep. Comes in in one ton bags, three or four shiploads a year. We offload the ship, goes in the warehouse, and then every other day we put truckloads of the stuff down to Long Harbor. So that's mining, that's production, right, yeah. and it's Argentia is involved. Right. And lots of things like that could happen, whether it's in buckins or, mm -hmm. you know, the material's got to get to shore somehow. And quite often, vessel act, you know, a ship is the best, most economical way of moving large quantities. So, yeah. Again, Argentia has the capacity to do it yeah. without, you know, huge investment in infrastructure. Yeah. It's interesting, Alan, you know, I never thought about it. I had no idea. I knew Valley Inco was operating here. But insulated within St. John's, you don't see this, and that's you what don't. we're trying yeah. to do: yeah. expose mm -hmm. the opportunities that are happening. You know, yeah. So we that probably are there. have, I don't know, four to five full-time equivalent jobs in Argentia just related to that project. Yeah, that one pro uh, commodity. Wow. You know. Yeah. 
I love the way you yeah. describe that th th there's talent there locally, companies sprouting up locally, right? Because every time you have to import an ingredient into the equation, your cost goes up, right? But you're telling me that you're starting to see it grow right there. Yeah, you are seeing it. Yeah, yeah. and the more that can, uh, can happen, the better. Because right. the more that's available in the area, the more likely people are going to use the area. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. just getting things repaired, whether it be a forklift or a truck, yeah. You know, the least you got to come to St. John's to get the part or the people to do it, yeah. to install it, the better. So, there, you know, it is developing. And the more, you know, activity you get in that area or any area of the province, the more you're going to cluster the support that's needed, you know, to keep it all going. So I think that's all positive. You know, uh, development brings more yeah. capability, brings more opportunity. So you're really starting to see a resurgence and, and positivity happening in the area? Oh, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and, you know, I guess bigger demands for supply and services, bigger demands for people. How do we deal with that? I guess that's another story. Yeah. Right. Great problem to have, but, uh, you know, it's going to be challenged to get all the people we need to uh, keep all this stuff going and attract the people to go to yeah. Argentia, you know, and, uh, and work on some of these projects. There's lots of Newfoundlanders who want to come home. Yeah, well, I think, <laughs> yeah, I think I think there'll be opportunity for them to do it. You know, if these things uh, come to light, yeah. some of the opportunities well, that we see. Yeah. What a perfect way to end the conversation on opportunity. Yeah. There's no doubt about it. You've laid out a lot of opportunity, uh, coming from a very, very, um, uh, coming from a company with a very rich history here. Company yeah. that's seen a lot of things happen a lot, in a this lot province. Of things, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you guys see an opportunity in Argentina. That's fantastic. Yeah. Well, we think it's uh, it's got a great great uh, opportunity for uh, in a multitude of areas. Yeah. You know, it's a wonderful facility. Uh, you know, great lots of infrastructure, lots to build on. I think. Well, uh, you know, I'm going to add this, Jeff. Thank you. You're the first person we've talked to. Uh, mm -hmm. Tomorrow we're going to we'll have four more interviews. I think there's going to be. Um, stop that. Someone's calling in. Um, I think there's, we're going to interview more people and I think we're not going to be able to cover everyone, are we, Alan? There's no way we're going to be able to cover everyone that's involved, but I think you've given us a little snapshot right now of, of what the excitement, and that's what we want to tap into mm -hmm. because exactly. positivity in this province is what we need to get yeah. things moving. Yeah, right? yeah, and I think it's going to come from a bunch of areas, not just one, like the yeah. windmill projects are nice, the hydrogen is good aquaculture in the area yeah. you know so yeah. if we can a little bit of everything it uh, it is more about stable growth not right. just a project that's here today yeah. and gone tomorrow and the right. boom and bust cycle that's yeah. just that one commodity you said is four to five full-time equivalents go. exactly that's one commodity yeah yeah love it yeah, yeah. very exciting Jeff, thanks very much for joining oh, the podcast. Welcome. You're the first in the Argentia series, <laughs> and hopefully we'll circle back. Where's that salt come from, by the way? A lot of people want to know where's that come from. It comes from the Mag... It's hard to even say this. Magdalene Islands. Oh, Ile yeah. de Magdalene. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, in the, in the Gulf. Yeah. So that comes from the Maggies. That's that salt. comes from the Maggies. Wow, yeah. fantastic. And I'm going to throw this at you. That laydown area, see, I got. I, I learned, right? <laughs> yeah. Is that the entire salt for the city of St. John's? That laydown area right it there? It is. Wow. Wow. Yeah. It all fits in there. It all does, yeah. Okay. Maybe we'll, we'll do a, a little we'll diverse a salt podcast. We'll <laughs> that. There'll be a lot of people looking at that salt wonder, where does yeah. that come from? Yeah. Now we know. Now Thanks very know. much, Jeff. We really okay. appreciate you being on the You're show. You're quite welcome. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you for tuning in to Gale Force Winds. That's Gale Force Winds, W-I-N-S dot com.